So we have a lot to talk today about Nintendo Switch 2. And look, there are so many stories to throw in here. It's hard for me to even try to summarize, but I'm going to attempt to do it. Uh, first up, we have some updates on the screen being reportedly used for the Nintendo Switch 2, coming from a very reputable place that actually has a history of being correct on these things based on their job. It's actually quite fascinating because they were right about something that had to do with the Nintendo Switch itself. Next up, after that, we have to look at the fact that brand new evidence is creeping up for colored buttons, this time directly from Nintendo's marketing, which could indicate colored buttons being a differentiator for being able to tell a Switch 2 Joy-Con or Joy-Con 2 from today's Joy-Cons. But more than that, we also have some evidence here that Nintendo is actually going to be emphasizing, and this is a rumor but still a fascinating one, the idea of having your old library be upgraded on Nintendo Switch 2 and emphasizing how important they think your game library is. So I feel like this is very, very fascinating to think about as well. And then our last one actually deals with a combination of a hiring post and a patent from Nintendo that's dealing with multimedia streaming services, which currently do not exist and would likely be implemented for Nintendo's next system. That's right, folks. We have a four pack of Nintendo Switch 2 stuff dropping for you right Right now! So what are we waiting for? Let's dive in. Now, this first thing actually comes from an article, a report over at Bloomberg. The report is based on the Omnia analyst Hiroshi Hayase, who doesn't just make guesses, but he actually bases his information on inside information within the supply chains for companies, in particular with a special focus on displays. He said, and corroborates rumors from Nate the Hate last year, that a new Nintendo console will launch with an 8-inch LCD display in 2024. They did reach out for Nintendo to comment on this, and Nintendo's response was simply, we have nothing to comment on. Furukawa, in the past, did try skirting around specific rumors last year, and that's really cool, but he never actually talked about the rumored screen size, and they still aren't denying that. So I just, I just kind of find that to be a little fascinating. The crazy part here is they also provide a chart about Nintendo doubling the demand for sustained amusement displays from just over 10 million in 2023, a number that I don't no way to really verify, and this is a calendar year number, so I don't even know how much over 10 million this is. Charts can be kind of deceiving. Anyways, to something much closer to 25 million this year, and it's hard to foresee Nintendo moving 25 million pieces of Switch 2, even 25 million with Switch Plus, Switch 2 combined. So I look, I don't really know where these numbers come from, what they're based on, what devices are included in them. But I guess the point of the chart here is to show that because Switch 2 is coming this year, Nintendo has massively increased the orders of displays of this type. So that I, I guess that's the idea to show the stark difference from last year to this year and future years with Switch 2. Now, I do need to give some credit here to Andres Restart because one thing about this analyst I find to be quite fascinating is this is not the first time he has said something about screens and what Nintendo is doing. Uh, thanks to a report by the same person who put this report up at Bloomberg and Takahashi Matsuzuki actually put up an article back in 2016. And if we go look at this article here from Andres Research's video, this comes from the same person, Hiroshi Hayahase, and he says, We expect a small recovery in shipments of flat panel displays for game devices because of Nintendo's new game hardware expected to release in 2016. And you see, this was, again, an article towards the end of January. And again, it's from Hiroshi Hayahase, who at the time was an analyst for IHS Technology and the firm's display forum held in Tokyo. So this guy has been connected for a long time, and we obviously... Obviously, no, back then, it was widely believed, widely, widely believed that the Nintendo Switch was slated for 2016 at that time, but obviously, you know, due to needing to get the game lineup ready and all of that, it ended up not coming out factually until 2017, and it was so early into 2017, I don't think it's like hard to imagine Nintendo might have wanted to announce it ideally for the holiday season prior, especially since they didn't have anything else but the NES Classic. Anyways, that's neither here nor there because, look, this is really cool, and the idea of an 8-inch display has been out there for a while. Uh, the last time we talked about this, in fact, it was talked about how the display 
could be 1080p, which would obviously be a nice increase from 720. So I do think that that is really, really good. So I am excited about that. And I'm also excited about this next thing we're going to talk about with Nintendo Switch 2, because while this is still widely believed to be speculation and rumors, and, you know, I don't even know. My not even rumors. This is more so on the speculation side is... We've been talking about the color button theory for a long time. I know a lot of people have been theorizing about it across the internet as colored buttons have started to appear in third-party games, Nintendo first-party games, etc. in the second half of 2023. And now we have some more evidence that was discovered by Nintendo Leaks, but again, because of the language barrier, I don't understand their videos, but Andres Restart does. And if we go over and look at his video, we can see in one of Nintendo's marketing videos, for Nintendo Live, we can see an X button that's blue, a B button that's yellow, an A button that's red. That's right, we are seeing the SNES colored buttons up here in Nintendo official marketing. That is obviously fascinating and just adds to the color button theory that maybe Nintendo is slowly subconsciously trying to get us used to this idea of color buttons. So we start to make this association to a new system that they are going to announce this year that might feature colored buttons. I don't really care about color buttons overall, if I'm being honest, but it does add a little bit of character and flavor and I'm not against it. I mean, I got nothing against colored buttons. Uh, we've had color buttons on the Xbox controllers for a while as well. So, hey, I'm all for it if I'm completely honest. Now, we're not done with Switch 2. I mentioned we had four different things to get into. So what if I were to tell you that there's a new rumor out there talking about backwards compatibility and enhancements that will just be there for your back catalog? Well, here we go over to Nash Weedle, who has sort of referenced this stuff in the past of Bayonetta uh, and being able to, you know, put your old Bayonetta games into Switch 2 and get enhancements. But that was like a specific case. This is sounding like it might be more broad strokes across the entire medium. Here's what he tweeted out. Now, again, still a rumor. And Nash Weedle, you can see right here, this is where he is on my uh, rumor believability scale. He's not in the wishful thinking category but still sort of questionable. We've heard a lot of things he has said to bear fruit beyond the Metroid Dread stuff. But getting into what he said here with the translation, it says, it seems that a large part of Switch 2 marketing campaign is to emphasize from the beginning and in a very persistent way how your games will look on the new console. So they're going to be emphasizing visuals, which is very unlike Nintendo, but this is a new president. So... I'm not opposed to this, especially if it's an iterative system. You got to be able to mention something marketing wise. And you'd be like, this is why you get it. And maybe visuals and visuals enhancements are the way. Anyways, he also says they will give importance to the user's catalog, which jumps generations and elevates their experience. Let me read that again. Again, just a rumor. They will give importance to the user's catalog. Now, he doesn't say back catalog. But he does say their catalog, which jumps generations and elevates their experience. Now, to me, folks, this clearly is indicating backwards compatibility and talking about how we're going to see a lot of visual enhancements to our older Switch games. You just take that Switch cartridge, pop it in your new system, take your digital library, re-download it on Switch 2, and just get instantly enhanced games. And they want to emphasize this as a major selling point for the new system. That is something that I do agree with in many regards and think Nintendo could actually do as a major selling point for the system. Look, we obviously have had enhanced games on you know Xbox and PlayStation, but not to a massive degree and not just something where the user doesn't have to think about it or make extra purchases. It would be really cool if like it's just, hey, play your older games on this system and just get a better experience. And that would be a major selling point because that is not how it was marketed on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series. And I do think that that is a marketing point that a lot of people will look forward to and consumers will understand as consumers do understand when you get the new phones, you're getting a bigger, faster, brighter, better phone. That's what you're kind of saying here. Hey, you get this new Switch, you're getting a bigger, faster, brighter gaming experience. I, I do think that that is a really great marketing tool. So. I don't know. Now, we got to get to this last thing, which is based on a hiring post and some patents. Now, these patents, uh, actually just all of this in general, I originally discovered here over on the uh, Nintendo Universo page. This is all translated because he discovered a hiring post. But first, we got to go over to the Nash Weedle uh, stuff from earlier. So this is an earlier patent that Nash Weedle put up 
uh, from Nintendo, and it says it highlights and assign an icon that you want to represent the content. Check the system, indicate that uh, what's been complete, off, blah, blah, blah. For those who don't know, this is about uh, selecting and ordering streaming audiovisual content. So this would be like a Nintendo way, uh, a Nintendo application to enjoy Nintendo movies and shows on a game console. That's specifically uh, what this is about. So you're seeing just a couple of things here, um, kind of showing you know, organization methods and the coding behind it and, and all of that. And that's fascinating, but actually it being a patent doesn't mean much until we realize that Nintendo put up this recent job posting for a contract software engineer and again, full credit to Necro Felipe for this discovery. Uh, and if you go down your description of duties, it says design and develop software to support multimedia use cases. Then, develop new features capable of being successfully deployed in a massively used gaming console. And then, communicate and collaborate effectively with other engineers and drive software development, yada, yada, yada. Um, and then, you can just see all the requirements for the summary requirements. You can apply for the position and pay $60 to $85 an hour based on uh, your experiences. But what you can see is that they are actually looking to deal with this. Like, look at what it says your responsibilities are. Um, your responsibilities include system software development, performance optimizations, architectural improvements, bug fixes, and other enhancements for Nintendo gaming systems. And again, it's all about multimedia use cases. This kind of supports that patent we saw where Nintendo might be looking to create their own streaming, I want to say a service, uh, but their own I don't know. It's almost like a Netflix for Nintendo, a Nintendo Flix. It could end up being a streaming service. It could also just be part of Nintendo Switch Online, uh, but a way for us to watch things like the Mario movie or the Pokemon animated series and movies, uh, Detective Pikachu, the upcoming Zelda movie. Maybe Nintendo's trying to make this multimedia empire. Maybe we could watch the old Zelda cartoons and the old uh, Captain N stuff. Like maybe Nintendo's going to gather this all together and just offer a streaming service for it exclusive to Nintendo platforms. I do think that, again, is just another selling points so you can kind of see what nintendo is doing here and where there is a game plan starting to form and this is if all of this is true over what nintendo switch 2 is going to be how they're going to market it and how they're going to get consumers excited especially if it's an iterative system oh man it looks like a switch but it's called the switch 2 why do we need the switch 2 and i already have this you can see the marketing plan starting to take shape the things and abilities and capabilities this system might have that the other doesn't, especially when it comes to just making your games run better, look better, be better in handheld and on your TV. Anyways, guys, I am Nathaniel RoboJets from Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully this gave you all the information you could ever want on Switch 2 for today. If more stuff crops up, you know we'll be right on top of it here at Nintendo Prime. Catch you guys in the next video.